What's up, everybody? This is Microphone Joes, joined as always by Adamic and No Rev. What's up? I'm CJC, and we're here to talk about Defenders. We just watched the very first episode. We're going to give some quick thoughts here, and we'll head back down and watch the next one, and uh, we'll keep updating you as we go through. So, guys, have at it. What you think? I'm drinking alcohol. Dude, Sigourney Weaver. Oh, oh, we're talking about Defenders. We are talking about Defenders. Pretty okay. slow episode, but yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's the intro. It's the intro episode. Yeah, it's an obvious build-up episode to into obvious yeah. uh, the other stuff. But let's jump to your point. Uh, no, no Rev, Sigourney Weaver. She hasn't lost it. No. Not at all. No, and not at all. She's definitely a strong point in the episode. Uh, I think that she was a kind of a show stealer. Yes. Yeah. Some bits. I and mean, I they're, think they're I, setting up, well, they're picking up where they left off with all of the respective defenders and kind of starting to weave the, the tapestry of plot. But uh, whenever she was on screen... She know, stole it, yeah. yeah I think she's it. going to be just as controlling as the Kingpin when it comes to our attention when we're watching it. I feel like yeah. she's going to have that presence. And I, I think they really, they really nailed it because um, they've been setting up Madame Gao as this big bad. Yeah, but... She basically verbally bitch-slapped it's Madame Gao in that first episode. At the park? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, there's a couple of times uh, where, twice. She, ver- she, where twice, she verbally yeah. bitch slapped her, too. Oh, yeah, she definitely just kind of put her in her place. I, I said it before when we were watching it. I never thought that Madame Gao was a great villain. See, no. I, I mean, I, well, I think... Look, she I'm, was good in Daredevil because she was more mysterious, but the more yes. she got screen time, the less compelling she became. Exactly. That's exactly what I think. I think that in the Marvel Cinematic Universe... The best villains that they have have always been like a subtle evil. Yes. Yeah. You know, they're kind of always manipulating things behind the screen. Well, Vulture, I mean, he wasn't really evil. He had a reason for what he did. I mean, in the Netflix. Oh, and oh, okay. That we're talking totally. Well, yeah, because, okay, then Wilson Fisk, he he was going to tear the city apart to rebuild it. Right, Right. but they're they're less of like a. They're not cuck, chat, cackling and exactly. And I've always thought that Madame Gow kind of was. They did not do her justice. So we don't really know what. Sigourney Weaver's. I don't know what her character's name is. What the heck is her character's name? Are they? T- I don't even think they've said yet. I don't I think don't so. Think we so don't know what her motivation is. No. Well, she apparently is dying. Well, something. that's that's what sped up the timeline, is what I gathered. Because Madame Gao said, "Oh, we well, got to wait." Yeah. Why, 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 why is she doing and... this? Yeah. That's a good question. And what are they speeding the time frame up for? Destroying the city, it would appear. That's what well, it seems like. Yeah. I was, I'm assuming. So there was C four. And that one guy's apartment, so I don't know if they're I think they probably, just trying to level the city or they're I get, doing something. I get kind of a Ra's al Ghul, uh, League of Shadows kind of vibe, like, oh, it's rotting, we've got to bring it down kind of thing. I can see that. Yeah. I get that feeling a lot. You know, I'm surprised um, because she had direct interaction with Elektra and obviously with the hand, mm-hmm. and she must know about like the rejuvenation technology that they have. I feel like she's kind of the leader of the hand. I get that feeling too. Like she pretty much owns all of it. But I know, but by the rejuvenation though, it takes something from you. Maybe she doesn't want to give up her soul. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what that takes. I can't remember from Daredevil season two exactly I don't think what it, it ever says. I, think I it thought just, it was kind of implied, wasn't it? Though it's implied, that it, yeah. That, you know, and I do think, yeah, I do and think Sticks uh, yeah. says something about that in Daredevil season two that when they rejuvenate you, it takes something away. It, wow, this really does sound like the League of Shadows. Yeah, they have the the uh, Lazarus Pit. Yeah, this, yeah. Um, something I noticed, and I said it right off the bat. Uh, Iron Fist's fights are edited so poorly; it's ridiculous. They're just—they're yeah. not fun to watch. Yeah. He's, he's the weakest part. Of uh, that yeah. Fight. What, what I'm curious is though, we didn't see anybody else fight, so I'm hoping because in Daredevil they had a lot of long takes. There was some quick cuts, but it was a lot of long takes. And Luke Cage had really good editing, and then Jessica Jones did too, who was great in the episode. Oh, I, yeah. I love. Well, I think. But I hope I hope whoever did the editing for Iron Fist isn't in charge of the editing for all of these. No, fights. I think that. <laughs> They recognize that Iron Fist is kind of the weakest part. I mean, they open with him and his fight scene. He only shows up two more times in the whole But that's what I mean. Yeah, all of the plot building has been, you know, catching up with Matt Murdock and Luke Cage getting out of prison and Jessica Jones following this. this I feel uh, like that, too, that was the case, too, because he was the last series that came out. Yeah, he's fresh in our mind. Yeah, Yeah, he's the freshest in our mind. I can see that. Yeah. Um, so he'll probably get a bigger role in my eyes. I hope in not. Series. I, I mean, hope not too. I hope not. Also, but I would. I. I. You know, Daredevil. I don't dislike Daredevil at all, but he's gotten a lot more screen time. So I really hope 
Luke Cage and Jessica Jones get more than the other two. I, I really like both of them and Jessica Jones a little more so than Luke Cage. I hope that oh, I love is Jessica the Jones of a lot of jokes. I think he will be. Yeah. I think he will That's be the butt of a lot him. of jokes. I feel like Luke Cage and Jessica Jones are going to give him a lot of shit. Oh, I, I, I just, I don't care what happens. I just need more Jessica Jones. That's true. And we, we that's, saw that's a couple of bitch. small characters show up. Yeah. Um, with Foggy, Foggy and representing uh, Luke Cage, getting him out of prison. The nurse there, Claire. I can't remember her name. Rosario Dawson. Rosario Dawson, but yeah. her name's Claire. In the series. Yeah. And then the and Claire Thompson. Pe- Peggy. Peggy is that the blonde girl's name? Peggy or Paige or what? Paige. It? Paige. Yeah. Yep, she shows up, and then the the cop from Luke Cage showed up. Actually, pretty much Claire. They, no, they language. pretty much hit on all the minor character, all the supporting minor characters. I just realized that everybody's major yeah. supporting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, they're just kind of bringing everybody up. Yeah, the, this is what they've been up to for as much as they threw in there. It was kind of a slow episode. Yeah. Well, yeah, like we said, it's it's a lot of. Plot but normally that much crap would have felt rushed. But I guess so. There, they kind of did a good job. They slowed it down. But um, well, you got to um, figure it's been. When did Daredevil season two release? Was it last year? Over a year ago at this yeah. point. Yeah. So that's what I mean is they have to bring everybody up to speed as to where they left them. Yeah, because I forgot. Time jump. I forgot. I mean, I, I totally forgot. Like, I don't remember it at Does all. Does anybody remember how, did they say Daredevil, how long it's been? I didn't since... know Daredevil gave up being Daredevil. Yeah. Does anybody else remember that happening at the end no, of the season? No, at the very end of season two, he reveals to uh, Paige. That Karen, he... Karen, that's her name. Karen. Karen Page, right? Yeah. I, so. yeah. Okay, yeah, I don't Page. remember that. All I remember is that fight on the roof with Misty. him and Electra. Is the name of the cop, Misty. Misty. Knight. But yeah, uh, yeah that the and then the big old holes. The big he's Daredevil, and he gives it up because of her. That's it. No, at the, the, the season two cuts. Oh, out, so it's implied. Like, I'm and it's he just, he implied that he's given it up. And okay, no, he just just reveals that he's Daredevil. No, no, I mean it's implied now that in between yes. that moment and this moment he's given up being. Yeah, Daredevil. there's been some kind of time jump. Um, obviously, because Luke Cage is getting out of prison. Yeah, uh, yeah, and he was given. I think. And, I think if you, uh, I remember correctly, in Luke Cage season one, they actually said that he had like two years left on his sentence. Yeah, I think it was two or three. I'm not sure. But so, he, at the same time, he might have appealed and gotten out. Hey, didn't or the cops been, say all, those, gotten all, out, the, all that good behavior? Did yeah, you know, gotten good, out early but, for good behavior. So yeah, maybe it's been like a year. year you didn't have any fights. Or something yeah, like that. not any fights in prison or anything. Yeah, because like that's that. what Foggy said. Do we have uh, before we wrap this first episode up? Do we have any predictions for going forward the next episode or the whole season? Well, they're gonna pick right up where they left off with that giant earthquake. I assume. I don't think we're gonna see any is more that, time is that jumps. Malcolm, <laughs> is that like a Malcolm Merlin esque earthquake machine they got going there? Uh, maybe. One John can Mer- only hope, right? One John Barrowman show up again. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, does, do we think the Punisher shows up? I, I think no. it was pretty much confirmed that he would make a cameo. I, I don't. Th- I don't think he'll show up until they, they all get the together. They dropped the teaser today. They dropped the teaser today. So right, but I don't think he'll this, show up. This season. It's at the I had read that, that he's going to show up at the end of the season. No, yeah, that that teaser is after the very last. Oh, episode. okay, all right. We yeah, just saw it on Facebook. In so the actual season or not? Okay, we yes. just happen to see it on Facebook. Yeah, I don't think if you, I don't think he's going to make a cameo appearance. But if he does, it won't be until they all get together, like towards the end of the season. Yeah, I would I like to see him rocking his minigun. Something. Kind oh, of I hope teased so. us. They teased us with the minigun, and he never actually. I mean, I, I'm not sure. Um, I mean, right now we know that Jessica Jones is pursuing a case. Mm-hmm. Luke Cage is... Trying to help that kid. Yeah, trying to help a kid whose brother and sister have passed away. He saves their mother right at the very end. Yep. Um, Matt Murdock is kind of kind of coming to grips with not being Daredevil and missing it. And yeah. Danny Rand just got back to just the city. That's what I mean. They're not giving him much screen time. Because yeah. he had a fight. He's trying to follow the hand. He was definitely fighting Elektra in that fight. I think so, too. Yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, it's him in a in a chopper having a bad... Well, no, he's in a plane at first yeah. having a bad he's dream. He's in a Rand plane, yeah. Yeah, and then he touches down New York right when that earthquake is happening. So, yeah, I mean, as for going forward... I don't know. I don't think... Do, I don't, when do we think the actual full team will get together? When will I shall assemble? Yep. Episode four. I'm going to say three. I, I, I think they're going to cross paths in three, but I don't think they're actually going to come together until probably about halfway through the season. Okay. I think... Well, they'll probably start bumping into each other. I think a little bit... Yeah, I feel like... Uh, next Kate, episode... Cage and, I feel like Cage and Jessica Jones are about to run into each other because I feel like their stories kind of have... have they're kind of, yeah, and they also have a diverging path. All right, well, that's going to take care of us for episode one, and we will be back shortly with a review of episode two.
And we're back. And as the drinks start to flow, it gets weirder and our opinions start to grow. Mm. Okay. We finished episode two. Um, and this is part two of our review slash speculation slash observation opinion thing podcast. Defenders! Defenders. We watching this shit. That's right. Um, so a couple of things I want to point out. Um, so in this episode, where, where do we leave off? Where we start off? So obviously Luke Cage meets Iron Fist finally for the first time. They have a throwdown. Mm-hmm. Um, Jessica Joan keep pursuing the case. She finds the C4. That's at the beginning of episode one. That, that was the end of episode at one. At the end of episode one. She finds the C4. The FBI and the cops come um, in and, and then, finally take the C4 out. And then Jessica Jones swipes a manifest. The thing that like I think a, the like FBI... Badass. I think that the thing the FBI should really be investigating is um, Danny Rand's ramen noodle hair. <laughs> yeah, okay. it looks like hardened ramen. It You're does. Right it now. looks You're like right every it morning looks like he, he literally... wets the bottom of it and shoves it on top of his head and goes about his day. So, yeah. so threads are starting to finally weave together, though. And not we ramen noodles. That, uh, yeah, it's been not, not ramen noodles. <laughs> we find out that um, the people that Iron Fist are pursuing. And one of the kids that Luke Cage is trying to help out. They're cleaners for the hand. Right. Yeah. Yes, the they're kids. cleaners for the hand, right. So that's, like, that's how they end up meeting up. Yeah, they're like dissolving dead bodies with chemicals But they don't work shit. directly for the hand because when Iron Fist asks the kid, he says, I'm just a cleaner. I don't know what you're talking about or something like that. Yeah, right. So Jessica's, Jessica Jones finally catches up with the guy that she's been pursuing. Electra breaks into her apartment um, and I have to make a point. Does she even lock the fucking door? Yeah, I don't. I don't secure apartment the entire time. Yeah. yeah, I don't think she ever does because if you think about it, her window is always broken. Keep and as a matter of fact, at it's least covered four, in cardboard. At least four times in that first season, she came home and the door. So was It's unlocked. like every third scene, somebody's in her fucking apartment. Yeah. But, um, but anyway, yeah. So Electra breaks in uh, and kills the guy. He kills himself. She, well, he kills himself. You're right. He kills himself, and then she tries to pursue Electra. Electra gets away, and she gets taken in by Misty Knight. And then Matt Murdock shows Just up. Just shows up like a badass. He's like, like, quit talking. Yeah, as her lawyer. But other than that, he his plot thread hasn't been much, really. No, there no. was only no. one other scene where he was talking to Foggy. Yeah. yeah well, Foggy gave him in, yeah. in the yeah. bar. And he's trying to keep him from becoming Daredevil, and is just giving him busy work. Yeah, pretty Wait, much. Wait, was this episode... No. This episode started with him on the roof, didn't it? And he beat the shit out of those guys in the alley. No, that was the end of the first one. I don't think it was. No, I think... No, the end of the first one was the earthquake. Yeah, this episode actually started... It's weird because think about this real quick. The first episode started with Danny Rand and he was barely in it. This one starts with Daredevil and he's barely... I feel like there's a little bit of a pattern here. Whoever starts it gets let... Yeah, so we'll have to see who starts and see if it follows that pattern. I can see that. Yeah, but he he throws down... It's because it's right after the earthquake. There's people looting. Yeah, Yeah. okay. So people are looting and then he saves two looters from getting shot by an owner or a shop owner or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, So one thing that uh, we noticed kind of as the episode went on, right at the beginning when he beats the crap out of the looters, um, No Rev mentioned there was a shot... Uh, the scene was from the side where he was lit differently, and then uh, he said it looked like a comic book. Yeah, it was and, very visually, very comic book. And then later, we we were starting to notice that every time Luke Cage came on, the way the lighting was, and it seems like each character has a very distinct flavor. Yeah, it's shot yeah. and framed differently. So I'm yeah. curious when they all get together, what's it going? What look is it going like? to look like? Well, that's almost the opening was almost uh, somewhat of an amalgam. Of all of their individual openings, and I say for Iron Fist, but he doesn't count ever. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was kind of like a blend. Except of... at Chinese restaurants serving ramen noodles, <laughs> <laughs> or he gets mistaken as the entree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sir, I didn't mean to eat your hair. <laughs> Is it hair? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's definitely it's it's a lot about coming together. I think they're trying to blend all the different art styles because each of the shows have had a very distinct presence. Out of all of them though, I personally like Luke Cage's. The look of Luke Cage's the most. Then the soundtrack and the feel. I like Daredevil's personally. It's really really dark. Daredevil's is more comic booky than any of the others. Yeah. yeah, Whereas Luke Cage is, you know, the the street level hero. He's got the, the soul music and the, you know, the Follow lighting is what I really... I mean, the music is really good, but there's just something about that lighting that really does... It's an ambiance thing. Yeah. 
Okay, uh, a couple other His points. His bald head just shines um, so beautifully. One thing that I mentioned when we were watching it, Turk the Arms Dealer. How is he not fucking dead yet? Yeah, the because biggest snitch. The biggest snitch in the entire show. It's you literally... literally have to twist his arm a little bit. Somebody <laughs> not off. even. Like, literally all he, he did... He sprays him with some beer. Yeah, he punches a keg and sprays him with some beer, and he gets freaked he out and does. starts just flapping his gums. Well, that's what I mean. Like, you know Luke Cage's M.O. He's not going to fuck with you. At the, the most, you know, he's just gonna like sternly lecture you a little bit. You're not even gonna get hurt. Like Daredevil, I think breaks his arm. Yeah. In no, he's, two or doesn't something. he slam? He slams in a car door. He's, or no, he he has his hands in the trunk and he slams him down, there doesn't he? Yeah. 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 So Daredevil will hurt you, but like Luke Cage is not gonna fuck with no, you. No. I'd you're... be most afraid of Jessica Jones though, because she's just a hardcore bitch, man. That's true. Yeah. Like That's she true. does not give a fuck. That that chick is gonna be my wife. Someday. <laughs> How many times are we going to hear this tonight? Hey, man. This is the uh, first time on air, okay? So I'm making that official. Okay, yes, and everything that does not happen on air does not count. So there you go. It's, if it's not worth being recorded, it's not worth having in a conversation. That's true. That's true. By the way, while we're on the subject, I will go on record saying that Iron Fist gets his ass whooped by uh, Luke Cage. He I gets figure, he gets know. one good punch in. Yeah, but we, we had the debate about this. Like we said, he's dipping around Luke Cage while he's fighting, but Luke Cage wasn't really trying. He was just trying to push him off of him. Or as Iron Fist, really, while well, he started Luke Cage wasn't him. really trying, and he was still whooping his ass. And Iron Fist was but as actually soon as trying. He got the actual Iron Fist out. Yeah, but that was the one good hit. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. I think it's if they a would really have went tough to an actual call. Throwdown, and Luke Cage was starting to try. It would have gotten more difficult for Iron Fist because really what would have happened is Luke Cage would have not been able to hit Iron Fist yeah. in a regular fight. So he would have started to use objects. He would have started like fucking swinging cars like that, and picking shit. up that when he picked up that massive piece of building off the, of the off the car. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what I mean is I think that once Luke Cage gets down to the nitty gritty and he starts to brawl, like you saw in, in Luke Cage season one where he picks up the couch and he just like swipes like five dudes with it. I think like. When it came to an actual throwdown, he started grabbing heavy objects and trying yeah. to beat Iron Fist with them. Yeah. Like, he wouldn't just try to do a fist fight. That's Whereas true. Whereas Iron Fist would try and keep it close and personal because he's going to be able to dodge all Blue Cage punches. Yeah. So, it, it definitely would have been an interesting throwdown, but I don't think we're ever going to see it. It was very comical, him trying to punch Blue Cage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's definitely a lot of subtle, kind of dark comic relief. That's more of a Jessica Jones thing. Yeah. I think that's bleeding over to the style of show. That okay, so here's a question. Can Iron Fist use his glowing hand as a lantern, do you think? Like, if he was to channel his chi and it was in just, like, a dark-ass room... This little light of mine... That's right. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna let, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. And we, they haven't really discussed how long he can hold his chi for. Like, it's if it's, it's indefinite... never on screen been very long. No. That's what I mean. Or if it's just, like, quick bursts or what? Like, how much concentration Because in the comics, I he can actually... I think when he tries to explain what she is, because it never really works. Yeah. Because that's the thing. In the comics, Iron Fist can channel it to not just one fist, which is all that we've seen in this Netflix series. Body, right? He can channel it to his feet. He can channel it to both feet. He can channel it to both hands and feet. He can channel it anywhere. He channels it a little bit in the Iron Fist series because he he helps heal... um, Right, but you only see it in, like, typically the one hand. one hand, yeah. But in the comics, and even in the cartoons, honestly, he can 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 channel it What cartoon did Iron Fist ever show up in? Um, Ultimate Spider-Man. Oh, I never watched that There's, like, a Disney XD one. Um, I just want to, real quick... um, I have a little bit of a theory about Sigourney Weaver's character, who is named Alexandra. Yeah, they the finally way. revealed her name. Yep. In in um, Iron Fist, I'll be really quick, they mentioned that there was some woman that betrayed Kun Lun, and it was really heavily implied that it was Madame Gao. But at the beginning of this episode, when Sigourney Weaver shows back up, she talks about Kun Lun. Almost with like a sense of Like she knows about yeah. it. And she also kind of insinuates that she knew... Some musician that lived around the time of Beethoven. She very yeah, yeah. so I'm almost I'm thinking that Sigourney Weaver is the woman who betrayed Kun Lun. Kind of like she, she was supposed to be the Iron Fist. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. she's and ancient also she, and immortal and also uh, she knows Stick somehow and calls him old friend. Now that could be anything, really. Yeah, but well, he he could have some tie with Kun Lun that we don't know about. That's because true. He is an enemy of the Hand. So how would you even know about the Hand? Unless you were part of the inner workings at some point. That's true. Yeah, yeah so. sticks to origins haven't been really discussed. Uh, I think that's it, right? Okay, you got any more points or whatever? No, I think I'm good. All right, on to episode okay. three. Episode three. What's up, everybody? We're back from episode three, right? Yeah, yes. Episode three. 
Yeah, I kind of lost track. I, I was wondering if it was episode four or episode no, one. No, we were or... on three. Okay, we're on we're episode three. three. Yes. We ran out of alcohol. Well, we ran out of beer, so we're just using empty glass bottles to simulate the sound now. But I do have a mixed drink, and I'm getting there. So Yeah, I got to stop for a little while. Um, wow, that was... Intense. Amazing. That was that was Amazing. a hell of a payoff. Whew. So yeah. prediction wise, um, I I said that they were going to start crossing paths in three. So I guess I was right. Didn't I say that two, three? Well, I think you said three. And I said episode four. Then we're going to come together in four. So and spoiler, I'd actually read that they didn't come together until episode four. But, but I guess they that's come not together. actually true because yeah. they came together at the end of the last three. like ten minutes of episode three. Yeah, it's yeah. Ten minutes, yeah. They all converge on that office. Yeah, for what the hell was the name of it? Uh, I forget. It something matter. Circle. Yeah, yeah Midland, Midland, Midland Circle. Circle. Midland. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Yeah, one of us okay. men knew it. So, so we definitely know that Alexandra is the leader of the hand. Yeah, okay. absolutely. And I think that your theory is right because she says that she's been resurrected before. Yep. So she's come back quite a few times. And then, right. Yeah, and she said that she died more than once. And she asked. She also asked. Uh, Iron Fist at the end of the episode how Kung Lun was these days yeah right? like she, so Stick chops off his fucking hand that, oh which is God, a Star was, Wars <laughs> reference in itself that's true that's a, that's that's cool. a Marvel uh, nod to Star Wars so he cut off his right hand and yep. we find out that Elektra secretly has the power of jumping out of coffins of blood like a seal yep yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah she just flops her on the ground her memory is white so she has no idea who she is everything besides her instincts and her some, or she slowly starts her, to gain like motor functions and like speech and things like that, but she loses all of her memory. Yeah, yeah, it's like muscle memory is still there, but nothing. Right. Yeah, yeah, nothing cognitive. Yeah. Um. So I do have a new theory. Yeah, this is, is a that, good theory. Um, is a good Alexandria one. or Alexandra switches bodies with people, and the point of the black sky is that they become her vessel because she's talked about dying multiple times at the beginning of the episode and coming back. And I'm thinking that that's the entire point, is she's switching bodies and, and she keeps hopping. Do since. we have a precedent for this Alexander character, or is she brand new? No, she, she's brand new, except for your theory out of Iron Fist. That, yeah, but I'm, no, I'm saying, like, is, is there a comic book equivalent to her? Oh, I, I can't no. really, I can't really pinpoint I so. I anything like at this point. I feel like she was probably created for the show, <laughs> okay. yeah. just to bring so them we all have, together. This is totally fresh on this character, yeah, I was just wondering I if there was... so, don't quote me on that, but... Yeah, yeah I, I haven't really followed it. Well, I have an observation. Um, why do bad guys only attack one at a time? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> what is that? Why? It's, it's in the villain academy. I guess so. Just, just That's part of the course. You it's, cannot double team right. one at a time. Be gentle. Unless you're fucking Electra, apparently. Bad guys can attack other bad guys. But in the beginning of the training, in the beginning of the training, they only came at her one at a time. Right, because she was building up, and then at the very end, yeah. at the very last step of her training, it was ten ninjas with, with actual swords. Oh, and, and Stick, uh, Stick... In the dark. Stick yeah. serves Kun Lun, apparently. So, remember at the end of our discussion, Alexandra called Stick an old friend. That, make, that leads me to believe that Stick was in Kun Lun at the same time as Alexandra, which would mean that Stick is probably really old, too. Well, they might have both been contenders for the Iron Fist. That's true. Like yeah. he was with his... Well, right, yeah, because right if Stick stayed in Kun... So if Alexandra came back... Now I'm starting to, to... It's starting to flow. Kun Lun time moves slower. Right. Yeah. So if Alexandra came back to Earth and is ancient, that Stick could be... Earth years the same age, but being in Kun Lun age much slower. So that could be. That's a good. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, I never mm. thought about it like that. But oh my god, that fight scene though. at the very end. Yeah, where I, they I, all I, just uh, converge on the same office, and it's just like, oh, well, who are you, and who are you, and yeah, what's this guy's really deal? Good. And yeah. uh, so, quite frankly, they quite frankly, you could have completely skipped. The entire Iron Fist series, and he redeemed himself. Yeah, thus far and like yeah. the, the first episode, not so much, but like in this third episode, his they finally nailed the fight choreography. <clears> they <throat> yes, him that was a big point that I had. Right, here. and especially too where Daredevil or uh, Matt Murdock is fighting Elektra, and then Iron Fist just comes out of nowhere and punches the sword and with his iron and throws her through yeah. the sword. And throws oh her. my god, a little god, that bit is of so chemistry awesome. that's starting to build. Between him and Luke Cage, it's not really chemistry in a good way, but it's freaking hilarious. I, th- I, know, but I think they could pull off, and they haven't talked about it because I had heard that it was brought up in an interview um, with 
I forget his name, Finn something. Finn got, Jones. Finn Jones, yeah, that plays Iron Fist there. Um, that they haven't approached him about a Heroes for Hire, which is the comic book equivalent of Iron Fist and Luke yeah. Cage, and they start a business just being hired out by people. Yeah. So I feel like that's really against the character they've set up for Iron Fist in this continuity, you know? Because he's, he's filthy rich and all that, where well, the, he's, he's the premise rich, of honestly. Heroes for Hire, which honestly... The Defenders in the Netflix series should have been called Heroes for Hire because that's what it originally was. Because the Defenders in the comic book was something completely have, different. Like Deadpool and shit. And the yeah. Defenders and and yeah, it's like everyone. Doctor Strange and Spider-Man were all in the Defenders. I don't think they have much but... of a choice except after this point, especially if it keeps getting as, as being as good as it has so far, three episodes in, they don't have a choice but to do more team-ups. They cannot, except for the Punisher... In my opinion, they cannot go back to single hero storylines. They can't. Yeah. You can't do it. No. You know, I see that. Yeah. Even if you were to introduce a new character, you kind of have to introduce it into somebody else's storyline. Well, they haven't really talked about it, but I mean, we know that we have <clears throat> Daredevil Season 3 coming out, mm-hmm. um, and Jessica Jones Season 2. I mean, I don't know if they'll do straight up team ups, but it wouldn't surprise and me. I d- but I do believe I read somewhere and this is totally speculation and off the off the top of my half drunken memory, that the reception to Iron Fist, they have not renewed it for a second no, season. No, they did. They did. Okay. They did. I thought yeah, they yeah, did. at Comic Con I think they renewed yeah, they it for did. a second season. Oh so it was recent. Mm-hmm. I had read that yeah, a while. Um ago. actually yep. I believe because see with the whole um Disney coming out with their own streaming service what, which is big, that's which huge. is huge, but we're that's a topic for another time yeah, right now. So what I heard is that they're actually going to do one more season of each, and then one more season of Defenders, and then everything is going to, or at least in my specul, like that's what I heard is they're going to do one more season of each, and then one more season of Defenders, and then once this whole Disney streaming service pops up. That's when they're all going to switch to the Disney. That's going to change service. everything because all these already have a lot of funding. When it's totally in Disney's lap, the money can just... They can do anything they want. Oh, yeah. It's just going to roll right in. There's no constraint. Disney prints money, literally, with the mouse on it. So So what you're saying is... We're going to be running on mouse bucks here within 10 years. I had too much to drink. Yes. (laughs) I have one more thing... Is there a such thing? ...that I would like to point out. Luke Cage is going to be the voice of reason in this series. Yeah. yeah he definitely, he definitely <laughs> yeah. is a moderating presence. Yes. I noticed that. Like, he yeah. kind of grounds Iron Fist and tells him, you know, you think you're on the side of right, but you fucking... You're, you're a rich white boy, pretty much, is yeah. what well, his, the gist Well, not just that, but I was also... He says there's a dragon. He's like, come on, dude. It's just... You know, <laughs> it's like... Yeah, he's invincible and he's crazy powerful, but he's the voice of reason, so... Yeah. No, I think so, too. Um, well, you know... I'm actually surprised because uh, Matt Murdock, Daredevil, has not had as big a hand to play in the series as I thought that he And would. we haven't actually seen the suit yet. Well, it's I, coming. I, it's coming. I, I, we accidentally looked ahead and we saw that it is coming. He dons it at some point. But I thought that he would emerge as the leader of the Defenders. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because he was the first person that piloted all of this shit. Right. I'm kind first. of getting the feeling that it could end up being... Um, the two girlfriends that kind of push them into doing things. Uh, oh, you Cages mean Rosario and, Dawson uh, and, uh... and and Iron Fist girlfriends? They feel like they're okay. more of the going to keep them on the path. Well, Rosario yeah. Dawson was kind of the thread that tied it all, it all together. together. Her character, yeah. it's, at least which actually me, in the comics, she's actually called the Night Nurse. I'm very she actually happy. takes up fighting and all that, and she actually becomes a superhero. Her superhero cult. name is the Night Nurse. Yeah. Listen, I'm very. I got. I got really tired of her. The more we see, <laughs> <laughs> fucking seriously? No, it's serious. What is her superpower? Night nurse. She has the mediocre power. The mediocre power to like heal people at a regular speed. Yeah, <laughs> she has her power is to stitch superheroes up, pretty much. The <laughs> fuck, man. Like, she can fight at a moderate level and stitch people up Does pretty good. Does she wear, like, a traditional used Norse uniform and just, like, no, wanders it... the streets of Hell's Kitchen <laughs> looking for superheroes to patch up? No, it's legit. Like, it's, it's actually, like, a superhero oh, costume. Shit. It's actually, like, a superhero costume, but it's what actually... Oh my god! Right, we're, I think we're 
we're done for episode three. <laughs> yeah, we're, we'll we're, we're going to episode four. <laughs> we'll, we'll see you in episode four, guys. <laughs> oh, oh. Okay, and we're back. I didn't write down fucking anything for episode four. That so happened. That happened. All right. Yeah. yeah. A, a lot of it took place inside of the restaurant. I feel like it was a it was very much like a bottle episode. Yeah. yeah. They were tra- all trying to get to know each other. Pretty yeah, much. pretty much. And like Jessica Jones broke off, did her own thing, accosted some guy that was like innocently parked on the street or something. I don't know. I'm like six or seven drinks deep at this point. So okay, well my drinks. my note that I had uh, chemistry between Jones, uh, no, yeah Jones and Cage. Um, you Jessica guys are Jones. yeah you guys are talking about how they were married in the comics. It's definitely still there. So still I think, like a thing. Yeah, yeah, when they were standing okay. out in the parking lot talking about it and uh, talking about stuff, yeah, there's definitely still a chemistry there. I could see them like not immediately because he's with Claire. But yeah, I could see them eventually. Kind of, yeah, hooking up towards the back end. I could also see Daredevil like reuniting with the Night Nurse. <laughs> 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 oh, don't please let's not start yeah, again. Let, let's, let's not, not fall into this, into this degeneracy. <laughs> um, uh, Stick shows up. Yeah, sticks yes. back. But Missing although, hand, but although, still fully back. yeah, we're pretty much gonna start calling him Stub from now stub, on. Stub, yeah, not stick stub. <laughs> yeah. um, with Jessica Jones's scarf over his face, I noticed that Daredevil kind of looks like a knockoff. Like if he went to China and found a company that made knockoff crappy toys, and they made a Ninja Turtle, that would be him. He's like a not name brand because they yeah, have the licensing but not the license. He's, he's like a, a he's, he's a, a samurai tortoise. No, 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 no. He's a middle aged, he's a middle aged samurai tortoise. There you go. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> middle aged samurai tortoise. That's right. Uh, okay. And ju- and uh, my last note was that Electra's belly button disturbs me to a level I can't describe. Because directly. she has an Audi. Not an it's Andy. like an Audi. On it's the, like, it's a like, a, it looks like a no. It looks like a it looks like a crater because like the outside edge is an Audi. It's but then a half and half. Inside is an innie. It's really creepy. It's a half and half. It's a half and half. It's like she's got like this raised suction cup and ring. I don't want to spend like five minutes talking about the her plays Electra's belly belly button is. Disturbing. Wow. So yeah. I'm gonna segue Everyone into the possibility of Nabu returning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm curious about? Is... I'm not trying to talk about belly buttons all night. That's fair. No, what I'm curious about is at in season two of Daredevil, Stick talks to a guy. Like a mysterious guy. He's kinda like he's like very samurai esque. He has a bunch of scars all over him. You never see him again. That's it. Like, you literally see the back of him in Daredevil Season 2. He has, like, his, like white hair. Yeah, and he, he's all, like, knotted up and whatnot. I'm curious as to if he's going to make his debut in The Defenders, because it almost seems like it's somebody that Stick is reporting to. What's the organization? I forget the organization. I don't. I didn't catch the name. The Chen or something? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, he says it. I forget. But that might be the leader there of There was that organization. so much exposition in this episode, I got lost a couple times. Yeah, it was a lot of... Furthering the plot, I'm hoping so a lot of dialogue focus on action for the last four episodes. Yeah, but that that it was like I said, it was very much a bottle episode. Oh, also, um, I'd like to throw this in. There was some, or when Jessica Jones goes off and does her own thing, she kind of goes into the library and like cross references the signatures. She did on her computer. It was yeah. pictures she took. Yeah, and, and some of them were males and some of them were females. But either way, it was back from like the eighteen hundreds. They started of back the shell in company. 18, 18, 16, I think they said they every yeah. name started with an A and, and it they all the same match signatures. Right. Well, that kind of thing feels feels like kind of plays into the black sky thing that I was talking about. Yeah, and we had it that confirmed right. that uh, Sigourney Weaver's character Alexandra was one of the elders of Kung Lun. Yeah. Yes. Um, one of the one something. of the five fingers of Kung Lun. One no, no, five or, fingers five, of, the of the hand. hand yes. But Several she started in Kung Lun. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They started off as elders of Kung Lun and then they wanted to be immortal. And Madame Yao is one of them. And Gao. Gao. And Gao, yeah. Um, who else was? Uh, the one that nobody's seen yet, which I'm almost wondering... Know. If that's your knotted up guy, like maybe stick, maybe sticks playing two sides because he's not really trustworthy. No, that's fair. And, and then, he's missing a hand. Who? Who's the? Uh, the oh, oh, white, white hat. Missing besides Ash and Evil Dead. White hat. 
is one of the five favors. Yeah. Okay. Badass suits, by the way. Yeah, I'm thinking that they're going to unite at least the bulk of the hand. Because they said that the last time that they, she talked to Stick and she said the last time that the five fingers of the hand united, there was a culling. Yeah. And basically, she's threatening to bring that down upon New Manhattan. York. I wonder, yeah. I wonder what, what historical event they retcon into their culling. Oh, Genghis Khan. Russian. No, it's got to be like... No, a, I'm, a just, I'm just spitballing, but... Genocide, maybe like World War II or World War I, something like a big genocide, you know? Might, might be World the War II. The plague. Then. Yeah. Or that's that's like yeah, yeah, that's a good one because they always they use things. He said they use things that are naturally happening as cover ups for what they're doing. So yeah, the plague might be a good one. I can see that. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. Hmm, that's a good catch. Um, I don't have anything else. You have anything, no rev? I got nothing else. I didn't take notes. Nope. Yep. I just decided to focus on my drink. Yeah. No. No. We pretty much covered it. Yeah, okay. I think yeah. There wasn't really, like I said, there wasn't really a whole hell of a lot to happen in this episode. It's a slow episode. Yeah, there's a lot of plot and them being in the restaurant. And at first, I thought that the royal dragon was like yeah, a we did Google it, but there was nothing. Yeah, there wasn't yeah. anything. Well, Alex, I will say Alexandra uh, shows up in the restaurant, just out of nowhere. Too. Yeah, that nobody can even detect. Yeah. You know, stick especially with two devil. pretty much Which, wait, well, okay, radars. so that might be going into your theory too because he can't hear harpies. Heartbeats of, of people the people that, have that died are and, been resurrected. and she's gets in there without them hearing her, and Je- and not Jessica, Electra gets to the door without and kicks it in without them knowing she's there. Right. Well, she had said before that she has essentially seen the other side, the void, multiple times, has passed away and had come back, and she doesn't want to do it again. Yeah. yeah. So we can only assume that her end game is. Somehow immortality on some level, and, yeah. and somehow it's tied into the Iron Fist because they keep trying to seduce him to the dark side, if you will. Which, like I said when we were watching, I don't like that the Defenders is Are, all about the Iron Fist. I get it because he was the last series that was produced, but, but they're making him the like the magical one. pivotal or the magical like centerpiece, Lynchpin. yeah, linchpin of all of this. You know, I which feel, he wasn't that strong to be making. He's the better now. Yeah, he, he's picked up his game in the defense. And you had mentioned when we were watching it that you'd think they're basically telling us they're going to do a team up with him and Luke Cage. Well, we because they're like, they're, before, yeah, but the more we watch, I mean, they're, they they spend time focusing on those two just talking. You know what I mean? They just, yeah. that's, I think they might be piloting it. So here, I, I, I definitely think Heroes for Hire is probably. They probably want to see what the reaction is to the two of them interacting and then go for Yeah, that. I agree. Well, they had. They've already renewed Luke Cage and Iron Fist, respectively, for their own series. So it wouldn't surprise me if they both bled over into each other's series. They're gonna you know, have to. Just to see what kind of chemistry there is, and then they might not get a season three each. They might just get a Heroes for Hire, and it's just... I'd be fine with that. I'd be fine with that, too. Yeah. Honestly, especially as they make way for, I'm hoping, more heroes that enter the fold. I'm, yeah. I'm kind of wondering how fun. they're going to, like... Obviously, we know that Punisher is not going to be in this one, unless he shows up in, like, the last episode. But how are they going to integrate the Punisher into all this? Yeah, can I put something out there? You know, we got mystical ninjas with swords and... Why does anybody just shoot these pieces of shit? Yeah. That's the Punisher's for. Then get him. <laughs> he it's, comes in with his assault rifle and a grappling hook. And he's obviously, the they know that the Punisher exists at this point. So, yeah, why not just be like, you know I what? Feel, I'm done messing with like you hand people. If everybody wasn't just so big into fighting hand-to-hand combat, the, the hand, the hand, the organization, wouldn't really be shit. I love how the Punisher just comes in with an AK-47 and a vendetta. Yeah. <laughs> and just, and he shit. is, and he just is the ultimate equalizer. Yeah. yeah. That's right, yeah. I'm with the hand. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. Oh, man. Uh, man. All right, so that, that wraps up the first half of uh, the season. We're going to take a break, and then we'll come back and finish the other half. Um, we might be less drunk. We might be more. Yeah, who knows? We don't know, knows. We don't yeah, know where we're going to be at at that yeah. point. But until then, stay average. And yeah. be sure to check us out on uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and uh, you know SoundCloud, um, Spreaker, all of that stuff. So. Hashtag Night Nurse and My Wife. Right. <laughs> my Wife. Bye.